So the question related to the waves topic, block three, figure 7.1 shows a converging lens and the image, image is shown here, I. When an object is placed to the left of the lens, the principal focuses are labeled as A and B. On a figure, draw two rays to locate the position of the object and draw the object as O. So how it can be done the same way? Same way. So first we draw a parallel, like this time we want to locate an object. So from image, we locate in the same manner. If it is parallel from where it will pass, it will pass through the focus. And one through the center of the lens will pass straight. The position or the point where the two light rays will meet, that is the position of object. Because in this case, we are locating an object. So, and what kind of image is this? This is inverted. There's a difference between upright and inverted. Upright, like example, if object is in this manner, an image is also in this way, up, that is upright. Like if it was in the same way, it is upright, but it is upside down, we call that as inverted. So this is an inverted image. Yes, you can draw another ray. Like they ask for two only, but you can draw another ray. Like you can start with the focus, like passing through the focus. If it is passing through the focus, from where it will go, it will go parallel. So when it is passing through the focus, it will go parallel. So any two you can draw out of three. Any two, you will get the same results. And we have to label that object as O. So this will be the object O. And this is, so if object is A, and remember one thing, it is laterally inverted. Like example, if the object is R, so image will be inverted and laterally inverted R. Like inverted, upside down, and laterally inverted means left appear right, right appear left. That's how the image will be. Then ring all the distances which are equal to the focal length. Which two distances are equal, which are distances are equal to focal length? You can annotate on the screen. So the distance from center of the lens to A or center of the lens to B, that is both distances are focal lengths. Figure 7.2 shows a green ray passing. We have to draw a red. Remember, uh, the bending depends on the frequency. Violet bends the most and red bends the least. So we have a green and we want to make red. So till here it will be same, but red bends the least. So small, diffract, a small uh, refraction and then again bend the least. So this will be the path for the red. If it was a violet, they said like complete the path for the violet, then it will bend more than green. This will be the path. Figure 7.2 should draw a path of a red light within a rectangular glass block. Figure 7.3 shows um, the green light which is passing through a... Uh, the figure 7.3 green light passing through a rectangular block, glass block, red light enter. So the same path it is entered, but it, you show a refraction. Bending happened due to a higher frequency, greater bending. Frequency is the main factor which affect the bending rather than a wavelength. So red bends the least. So this will be the path taken. Because how we decide the bending, we have to draw a normal. Normal is always perpendicular to surface. So this will be the normal. You can see the red bends the least and the green is bending more than red. The next is uh, state the name of a reflection of a sound wave or a, a 
ultrasound wave. What we call the reflection, the specific term is used for the reflection. Echo, yeah. About the relation, look, in the light, what happened, the speed of a light is constant or electromagnetic wave is constant. That is why for electromagnetic wave, if we increase the frequency, its wavelength will decrease. For electro, if the speed is constant, the relation between frequency and wavelength is inverse. That's why like violet is having the highest frequency, so it has a shorter wavelength. Red is having a longer wavelength, so it has uh, the shorter frequency. So for electromagnetic waves, they all have the constant speed. That's why if we increase the frequency, the wavelength will decrease for electromagnetic wave, which the speed remain constant. Figures 5.1 shows an ultrasound wave being used to scan an internal organ of a human body. The ultrasound wave has a frequency of 2 megahertz that passes through a human tissue at a speed of 150. Calculate the wavelength of the sound wave used in a human uh, tissue. So, how to work out the wavelength? We have the frequency. Mega means 10 power 6. And we have the speed. What, which formula we'll use? We have the yeah, V equals F lambda. This is a wave equation. So we V equals F lambda, where V is the speed 1500. F is a frequency 2 into 10 power 6 and wavelength we don't know. So this will divide 1500 divided by 2 into 10 power 6. That will give us the wavelength. And it's a very high frequency, so it should have a very shorter wavelength. What's the answer? 7.5 exponent minus 4 meter. Okay. The next is figure 5.2 shows the waves from a point S approaches a spread barrier. On a figure, indicate and label one wavelength and draw the three crest of the reflected. Look, wave fronts, there's a difference between a wave front and a wave. This is a wave, but when we have so many waves which are traveling in different directions, so it's difficult to draw all of them. So for that, we use a wave fronts. Like when we join the identical points, like all the crests we join together, then all the crest of other, other group we join together, these lines which I drew, we call them as a wavelength. And the spacing between the two successive wave fronts is known as the wavelength. So on the figure, we have to label the wavelength. So this will be the wavelength or this could be a wavelength. Then we have to draw a reflected one. So how it will reflect? In a reflection, the wavelength won't change. So if this distance, like example, two centimeter, other should also be two centimeter. In this question, uh, 6.1 is a full scale diagram showing a converging lens with the focuses F1 and F2. Yes, you have to keep the same distance, same wavelength. On a figure, draw two rays. So object is there and position of image. Look, first thing, you can clearly identify that the object is between the focus and the lens. So this should be a virtual image. So how virtual images are formed? Say this parallel light ray, it will pass through the focus. Another, which is passing straight through the center of the lens will pass straight. So these two light rays will never intersect. So what we have to do, we have to produce it backward. When we produce them backward, they will intersect at a point. So they will intersect at a certain point and that point, the position where the two light rays will intersect, that will be the position of image. So this will be the position and image length means the size, the label, the image IJ. So we label the image as IJ. And then you have to measure the length of image, like the length of this image. 
that is uh, done with a measurement. Another thing, another type of a question now you will find in exam in which, like here, usually what happens when they give the object, they give you the object, either whole of the object is above the principal axis or the whole object is below the principal axis. But another type of a question you will find recently that they are giving an object which is on both sides of, a, like above and below the principal axis. Say so the object is like this. And they ask, draw an image. So how to do this? We will do the same manner. Like first, we'll consider the tip of this first stop half, passes through the focus. One through the center will pass this way. So we get this half, one half. And then from the second bottom half, we'll do the same thing. We'll draw the parallel light ray. It will pass through the focus. One through the center will pass a straight. And the position or the point where these two light rays will meet or intersect, that will be the position of the other half. And we join them. So this will be the position of image. So this type of question is also there in which you will find the object. Some part of object is above the principal axis and some part of object is below the principal axis. Usually the questions which are common is either the object is above the principal axis like here or the object might be below the principal axis like in this example. Is it uh, clear? Uh, the last part? If an object is on both so above and below the principal axis, how it should be done? So you will take the top half and then you will take the bottom half and draw the image. Like using the same idea, principal axis, draw parallel light ray. Ring three description for the image. Uh, this image is like object is there. You can see the image. Which, what are the three description of this image which we formed here? It is virtual, that's right. Magnified, that's right. Same way as up. Yeah, that, that's like, which is also called upright. Real images are inverted, but virtual images are upright images. Figure 6.2 shows the three rays of a green light Three rays of a red light are passing. So, uh, same idea. Look, we have to complete on the figure, complete the path for the red light. So, red bend less, the, the bending of a red is less than uh, green. So, when it passes small, So this is a green light and we have to complete the path for the red light. So red will bend less and same way here red will bend less. But the one which is passing straight, because it is passing along the normal, so it will pass straight. That won't change the direction. Because when the light is passing along the normal, say this was an, this was an object, a glass object. If we have a, a light is passing along the normal, say green light was passing along the normal, it won't change the direction. Same way, red light will also not change direction. There will be a change in speed. We call that as a refraction, because refraction does not mean always there must be a change in direction. It can be a change in speed as well. In this question, a boy looks at the image of a clock in a plane mirror. Figure 5.1 shows a plane mirror, the clock and the position of one of the boy's eye. On the figure, draw the rays from a clock and reflect it to the boy and the figure mark uh, with letter X, the position where the image will form and state whether it is virtual or real. 
first thing real uh, the image formed by the mirror is it is virtual and it is the same distance as object so what we can do in exam you will measure the distance between the object and the mirror and the same distance you will make. Like example, say this is three centimeter according to the measurement. So same distance you will make three centimeter. Then draw the two light rays, two rays from the image to the eye and then join them on the mirror. So that is actually what happened. The light rays striking the mirror reflect and enter our eye and our brain sends the light is coming straight from the object. So when we produce them backward, we get a new position of the object, which we call image. And we label that as X. So whenever you're making and drawing an image formed by a plane mirror, instead of drawing the rays first, what you will do, you locate the object image. And you already know that the object and image are always perpendicular to the surface. So if this is like five centimeter, you will make a five centimeter and draw the image. And then draw the light rays from the image anywhere you can draw to the eye. And then join them from the object to the mirror. That's it. So you, here you don't have to measure anything and you, you just use a scale and you'll get an accurate result. And state the weather image formed by a plane mirror is real or virtual. So it is a virtual image. That is like imagination which created this image. Next is figure 5.2 shows an image of a clock. The boy looks directly at a clock. On the figure, draw the what the boy sees. What It will be a laterally inverted. So left appear, right, right appear, left. That's right. Because the, the needle on the right will appear left. But this is on the vertical scale. So it won't change. The clock is illuminated by a source of a monochromatic green light. What is the meaning of a monochromatic light? Light of a single frequency or a single wavelength. That's right. Light with a single wavelength. That's correct. A green light has a wavelength of 5.6 exponent minus 7. We need the frequency. So what is the formula we use? We use V equals F lambda. So if you need the frequency, it will be speed divided by wavelength. The speed of electromagnetic radiation, all three exponent eight, and the wavelength will be 5.6 into 10 to the power minus seven. So you will divide, you will get the frequency and that will be in hertz. So 5.3 exponent, 14 hertz. And when the wavelength, because for remember for electromagnetic radiation, when they have a high frequency, they will definitely have a shorter wavelength. This is the experiment. Uh, paper four short experiments are there. So two students are measuring the speed of a sound. A student are provided with a starting pistol. So one of the student is having a pistol, the starting pistol. And the other student is having a stopwatch. So when the student A fires the shell, two things will happen. It will produce light. He's not pointing towards other student. So fire and that is sound as well. But what will happen because light is super fast. So the moment he fires the shell, he will see the flash. When he will see the flash, he will start the timer. And when he hears the bang, the sound, he will stop the timer. That is the time taken by sound to travel from observer A to observer V. And they can measure the distance because it is a um, long distance. So how we can measure, we can use a measuring tape to measure this distance. What should be the, like a, a minimum distance we should keep? Five hundred meter. That's right. Five hundred. We cannot keep like three hundred and thirty meter or less than that. Reason is that because speed of a sound is three thirty meter per second. So within one second, the sound will reach. So it will increase inaccuracy in the experiment. 
So you have to just mention this in your own words, like measure a distance between uh, observer, the observer, like observer B and the person at position A by using a measuring tape. Then the person at A fires the shell. The person at position B, when he will see the flash, he will start the timer. When he hears the bang, he will stop the timer. And distance divided by time will get the speed. Repeat the experiment by changing the positions and take an average. A device at the bottom of a sea emits the sound of a frequency 200 hertz. The speed of a sound in water is 1,500. 1, what is the wavelength? So how we can work out the wavelength? So speed is, again, the wave equation. Speed is frequency times wavelength. So if you need the wavelength, wavelength is speed divided by frequency. So 1,500 divided by 200. So it will be 7.5 meters, right? The next is the sound wave passes from seawater into air. What happened to frequency? Remember, frequency for any wave does not change as it changes the medium. So frequency never changes. Stays the same, that's right. But what happened to the speed? It's a sound wave traveling from water. No, it won't increase because in water it is 1,500. And it is in air it is 330 meter. So what will happen moving from water to air? It will increase, it will decrease, not increase. Then a ray of a light passing through a curved optical fiber, draw a diagram. So if you want to draw a diagram for showing the maximum, like total turn reflection, some student draw in this manner, which is totally wrong. Because you're you are supposed to show minimum reflections. So one, two, and then it leaves. That's it. Don't show multiple reflection in optical fiber. And describe one uh, use of optical fiber in the medicine. You may do a diagram. So in a medicine, it can be used in endoscopy to examine the internal organ. Part two, you can draw the this like example, say examining the stomach or internal organ or esophagus. So you can draw an optical fiber here. And light will undergo total turn reflection in the optical fiber to examine the internal organ. Endoscopy is. But uh, now the optical fiber, the use of optical fiber in communication is what they ask, not the medical use. Then draw straight lines from each wave to the left the most appropriate speed. What is the speed of light in air? Three exponent eight, good. What is the speed of a microwave? Microwave also electromagnetic, so that, that's right. And what is the sound in solid? It's about 6,000 or 5,000, so that's correct. Then we have... Uh, Refractive index is 1.5. We want to calculate the speed of a light in a block. So refractive index is speed of a light in air, which is 3 exponent 8 divided by speed of light in medium. So refractive index is 1.5, 3 exponent 8 divided by V, cross multiply. So it will be V is equals to 3 into 10 power 8 divided by 1.5, which is 2 exponent 8 meter per second. So these are questions from block... Two, three, the waves.